So we'd like to thank everybody for coming uh, to you know cover the the, the follow up here to uh, what was a hearing on a temporary restraining order uh, at the Alexander County Courthouse. Uh, we got uh, we're very very gratified with uh, with the outcome today because what we got was the substance, if not uh, the order itself, uh, what we were seeking, uh, which is the Department of Corrections uh, by virtue of the uh, attorney uh, that was representing the state has agreed that they will not. Uh, continue with uh, what we view as a very unsafe uh, and very uh, unfortunate plan to transfer inmates out in preparation for closure of the facility until such time as they have met uh, and, and begun to address our uh, safety issues uh, that we've raised um, as a result of those plans. So um, again, we're, we're extremely pleased with the outcome thus far. Uh, what we think is going to happen now, what we heard in the courtroom today, is that the judge has scheduled a conference hearing to check the status of the hearings of those uh, issues, uh, those safety-related issues, uh, on the 17th of August. And he heard arguments today relative to the temporary restraining order itself. Uh, the attorneys on both sides are to prepare and present briefs between now and the 17th so that uh, when we have that hearing, uh, the judge will be ready to issue a restraining order at that time if it looks like uh, or at least rule on the restraining order, order I should say, uh, at that time if it looks like the state is not prepared to continue uh, its, its agreement today of not proceeding with any closure-related transfers until such time as they've dispensed with those issues. So all in all, it's a very, very uh, happy outcome uh, for what is unfortunately a process that we needed to take uh, to keep the state from uh, you know, continuing uh, bad plan after bad plan after bad plan in this Russian closed facility. How do you feel about the state's uh, argument to dismiss this whole thing? Well, the judge will rule on that as well on the 17th, uh, and we think it's it's ridiculous on its face. Uh, you know, they're trying to use some some legal bases uh, to say that an absence of information is not enough uh, to rise to the level of, of of a restraining order to keep them from persisting in their plan to close. And I mean, it's just ridiculous. We have been trying to engage the state in meaningful dialogue on issues related to the closure for months now. Um, and we have been stonewalled, we've been stymied, we are still awaiting uh, one large piece of a request of information that we've made relative to those closure plans and, and to this date still have no uh, plans. The first we ever heard of uh, details on their plans to move inmates in a, in a 4,000 person shuffle between Dwight and Logan and Lincoln was in their response uh, in the written briefs preparatory to, to, to today. So this is what it has taken to wiggle some of that information loose from the department. This weekend, how they were moving some of the CMAX inmates. Right. Well, look, safety is a concern because, um, you know, our officers are being asked to do things that they know are in violation and in contravention of the procedures and protocols that they have been trained in. Uh, you know, people who are, have been responsible for movement of TAMS inmates know how you're supposed to do it to keep everyone safe, and now they're being told, oh, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it in this old way from this other facility. Um, you know, that's why it's unsafe. Our, our members haven't been trained, they haven't been briefed, they haven't, I mean, none of this has been explained to them. They show up at work one morning and everything is different. So, I mean, that's why, and, then, and, and the transfers and, the, and, the, and the, the, you know, putting inmates on buses is just one example. I mean, everywhere we look, the department is doing things by hook, by crook, with very little deliberation and no forethought uh, in order to effectuate these closures in the fastest, not the safest, the fastest way possible. So the way you're talking about the temporary restraining order is you don't anticipate anything to come out of the arbitration that's going to happen on the 14th? Well, we don't know. I mean, the, the process is supposed to begin on the 14th. We, are, so we, we have agreed on an arbitrator. We're supposed to have an initial meeting on the 14th. Arbitration can be a complicated process, so we just don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think we can, you know, prejudice, by, prejudice, you know, whatever outcome may be there by saying, you know, I think it'll be this way, I think it'll be that way. The, the, you know, the facts are we have a meeting on the 14th. We're going to see where that process takes us. That is the remedy for uh, the you know the, the the grievances that we filed on these issues. So um, you know we're very hopeful in the arbitrative process. That's why it's in the contract. That's why we have agreed to you know proceed here. Um, and you know we hope the the judge doesn't have to uh, make a ruling on the TRO. You know if the parties can come to some accord and if the state is willing to continue the status quo while they're dealing with these very real, very important issues.